Kev, the guy with the grey 30, he's actually quite a good example of generally what seems to happen to people when they get into drifting. And he's a bike guy, he always has been a bike guy. And then he turned up last year, uh, asked us to build a car for him and went from when we first met him, saying, oh, I'll never sell my bikes, never sell my bikes. And now he's got two bikes up for sale so he can fund his drift habit. So it's quite interesting. Like, I enjoy seeing people come in and then they end up getting completely involved in it. And before long, I mean, even yesterday, you know, his car's here in bits at the moment. He's still at the track helping out yesterday. He was helping me doing noise tests and stuff like that. It just shows you, you know, again, the community aspect of it. We've always been, I would say, a national business, so we've had customers from sort of down f as far south as just past Newcastle, and then all the way, obviously all the way up to Inverness. Now we have customers um, from Germany, customers from Sweden, that sort of thing. So you know that's obviously made a big, big impact, um, and having that facility so close to the business, you know, if it didn't have a positive effect, then you know we're doing something wrong. I'm always looking to take the business to the next level, and I think that being uh, so close and you know. So involved with Jeff Landis is obviously going to be a positive thing. Always wanted a pickup as a drift car. You know, if I didn't live in Scotland, I would have a ute, but it's just, I was never going to be able to buy a ute and build it to what I wanted to build it to for the sort of budget I had. So E36 convertible was the perfect choice for me. I originally built the car with uh, just a 3 litre M3 engine. I'm actually in the process of installing the Skyline RB25 debt engine in there. People will say, oh, why didn't you put a JZ in? You know, RBs are unreliable, they're going to blow up. I'll be honest, noise. I love the noise, that's pretty much the main reason. <laughs> I build this car for me and no one else. Everything I do in this car is what I want out of that car, eh? so that's just, that's just the way it is. Garage House are the cool guys in the Scottish drifting. They're about everything that drifting should be about for me. You know, mates and having a laugh and having fun and having cool cars. And Fraser is sort of pinnacle of that. You know, he's he's all about having a laugh and having a blast in the car. You need people like him in the sport because he's so warm and welcoming. I mean, Fraser comes to an event and then he's like, "Oh, have you met this guy? This is my this is my builder. This is my plumber." So you know, he's bringing all these people in. He's that type of guy, and I think that's good. There's so many guys that you could maybe phone and say, listen, I need a hand with this. And they come around, they bother, and you know, help either way. Um, I think that, do that does help kind of keep everybody on a high about drifting, I think. It kind of inspires you to make your car better as well. Having somebody that, you know, is a good friend and stuff like that, you can kind of ask each other questions and ask them for advice and stuff. It's just like a sort of a wee family. That's, that's the way that I see it as, as much as everybody else. I think the rest of the guys see it the same way. We can all count on each other for anything, really. I suppose I've always worked on my own cars, and uh, it's one of the things, if it's got nuts and bolts that comes together, it'll go back together just fine. That's, that was my sort of always, my theory on it. <laughs> I started with a red 325 E30, and then we sort of got that much into it that we thought, can we really want to get our own drift cars? I got a 328, and I'd seen all but the Jay-Zs, and it was such a reliable car. I just seen it out every time, nailing it, nail overheating, no problems. Started on the button every time and thought, that's that's the way, like. And then found out what transmission worked with it, and it was all new to me. Uh, eventually got it all together, and it took two or three months to get it in E46 and running. I was always thinking, oh, if something breaks, I'll always keep something spare. So I actually got like spare transmission, spare motor, and then I wanted to do competition. I didn't want to take my red leather in my E46, and I had all the spare parts, so I picked up this car and then put all the Jay-Z stuff into that. And so it was all built here. It was actually built in a month. It's just on a whole set, a uh, piggyback ECU, Polish stuff, and just the other bits and bobs to make it fit. 
big hammer. <laughs> I think an E30 is a good chassis because it's slight, strong, small, and you can get big engines in them. Dead easy. <laughs> My E46 was dead long gearing, and I got used to driving it. Uh, but the whole set's laggy, so it was like long gearing and laggy, so you just get to drive harder and harder and harder. And when I picked up that, I was like, wow, this is light. The gearing's better, and just because I drove the E46 that hard, it just went the same way. <laughs> I like drifting the way it is. It's technically, I think, classed as an extreme sport. Um, and I, you know, I, I would prefer it stayed like that. And I think if you look at how the sport's growing, not just here, but internationally, you know, look how big Formula D's went, it's huge. Uh, Drift All-Stars is getting big as well. And there's, you know, it's more and more competitions popping up. So I don't think it needs to be classed as a motorsport in order to grow. You look at how big the X Games is, you know, extreme sports are massive. Um, so I, I, I think it's good that it stays extreme and doesn't go classed as a motorsport.